is important. Fur is a resource of our country and our time. We value the skins of fur-bearing animals for their beauty, their warmth, and their durability. The farmer followed the fur trapper across the continent. The trapper explored the forests long before the logger came. Cities were built, and rivers and streams were harnessed for power and irrigation. Along with timber and water, fur is an important resource. Many Idaho fur-bearing animals are live traps and transplanted to new areas. Trappers move along a stream, setting traps to capture muskrats without harm. The trapper carefully places his trap in the rushes and weeds along the water's edge. Carrots are used as bait to entice nocturnal muskrats as they search for food each night. After the trap line has been run in the early morning hours, captured animals are transferred to a holding crate. Muskrats have all the room they need in these big crates. Muskrats are the most common of all our fur bearers and supply nearly half of all fur taken. Several days may pass before sufficient numbers are caught to make a full load for the long trip to that new home. Muskrats must be fed and protected from the hot sun. Dinner time, carrots are just like ice cream to these little fellows. The new home site, on the upper reaches of this slowly winding stream, with an ample supply of grass, roots, and necessary requirements for survival, our muskrats have arrived. Planting sites have been surveyed many days ahead of actual planting time. Out they come. Fieldmen lift them by their tails. It doesn't bother the muskrats at all. It would seem the tails were put there for lifting handles. This little fellow doesn't mind the long, unfamiliar trip he's just experienced. That willow twig is what he wanted in the first place. That's part of my diet, he would say. This place is okay. To provide information regarding movement of colonies, small metal tags are attached to one ear of each animal prior to the release. Tags are numbered and the information filed for reference. When recaptured at some future date, these muskrats will furnish information necessary for management. This man is carrying beaver live traps. He is on his way to a beaver pond, where he will remove the busy engineers who have become too numerous. When this happens, or when activities of the beaver cause damage to private lands, they are live trapped and moved to distant mountain lakes and streams, where their efforts will aid to conserve water, provide fishing pools, and populate empty regions. The folding metal traps with strong springs that close the steel mesh sides are prepared by the trapper. When beavers swim in against the trigger in the center, side catches will release, allowing the trap to close. A suitable spot is chosen by the trapper. Ground is leveled for correct placing of the trap. The trapper builds a mound like the scent pile beavers have along the water's edge. Now 
a few drops of scent to attract the beaver. Ready for a visit sometime during the night. He's in. Careful preparation and knowledge of the beaver's habits has paid off. Traps are designed to close when the animal is nearly over the center so that injury will not result. Out over the dam, the first stage of a long trip. If distance is not great, beavers are left in the trap and carried to the large shipping crate. Into the holding crate they go. Whoops, get back in there, old girl. That's better. A good load, a load of beaver for the mountains. Live beaver for new waters. Into the streams they go, sometimes carried in sacks for short distances. Several beavers are planted at each seat. Sometimes planting sites are available near the road, and the beaver may be released right from the transporting crate. Every summer for years past, Idaho beaver have been on the move in this manner. Countless numbers have been supplied for streams and lakes to bring the beaver population back to its former position. On the shores of Payette Lake are crates full of beavers, part of a shipment to be dropped in the primitive area by parachute from an airplane. A conservation officer runs suspension ropes through the beaver drop box. In preparing for the operation, Beaver must be sorted for even size and weight, with one pair of beaver for each box. Ear tags are attached for future information. Into the drop box, nearly ready for that flight back into the mountains. The drop crates are loaded into the airplane. Parachutes are attached to cargo lines, and the boxes are stacked in rows along the waist of the plane. Ten boxes to a load, twenty beaver ready for the flight to mountain meadows. Plane makes a careful approach, ready for the drop. Now into the air and down they swing, down to the ground near a stream or a lake. The box opens and a most unusual and novel trip ends for Mr. Beaver. He's on his way now, his nose and his instinct Tell him where to find the water. There's room here for a new home. On a game preserve, fur supervisor and trapper survey the ridges and the hillsides. This is where the marten, beautiful and wild, spends its life. Trapping sites are usually chosen along the upper breaks of a ridge, sometimes partway along a suitable slope. Perhaps the set will be made at the edge of a meadow. This may be a proper place, on a ridge, near a huge tree, back in a hollow created by exposed roots. The marten is a tree-minded weasel. Although wild and nervous in their natural habitat, Martin have been known to become quite friendly with prospectors and other people of the backcountry. Live traps are baited with meat 
and placed under natural conditions to avoid suspicion. Marten are wary animals. Their fur is commonly known as sable. Humus and dirt are scattered lightly over the trip pan where the animals must step to reach the bait. Scent is placed above the trap to lure the marten near. Trap lines are checked each morning. It seems this set was successful. The edge of the meadow was the right place. Martin in a live trap, nervously pacing the cage as he attempts to escape. Bright eyes that aid him in his watch for enemies and his endless search for food. The orange underpatch is a badge of the Martin family. Carefully designed tongs that will grasp the marten about the neck and yet not hurt the animal are used to capture these fur bearers for tagging and moving to small crates. Out he comes, a snarling bundle of fighting fur. This ear tag is surely a new experience in his life. Tag numbers are recorded by the supervisor as work proceeds. It's not all one-sided by the looks of things. The Martin is a fighter. He's left his mark on the tiger's hand. He's now ready to be transported to another forest. Many miles and hours away, the Martin arrives at the release site. are opened and these Martin look cautiously out upon the same world but a far different view than the home ground. We can't blame them too much for not jumping out immediately. It's best to look it over a bit. Perhaps it's okay after all. We'll give it a try. Better head for that big tree. We know about trees and the protection they offer for our kind. Well, if you can do it, so can I. That tree looks good to me, too. Today, fur continues to be a resource of our country and our time. Fur is important. Conservation and management of fur-bearing animals are necessary. They're necessary if we're to have fur for the future.